So I'm going to be talking about a very uncool, perhaps unfashionable subject, which is love. And I'm going to be using um, an example or series of examples that come from uh, a very uh, dysfunctional uh, world of dysfunctional love, which is the world of stalking. And that is the subject of the book that uh, we are publishing uh, very shortly. This is a novel I've written called Can't Get You Out of My Head, which is based on a specialist unit that many people don't realise exists called FTAC, or the Fixated Threat Assessment Centre. So the Fixated Threat Assessment Centre is a special unit um, which has policemen, detectives and psychiatrists. And it protects... Um, people who are high-profile public figures, and it protects Downing Street and Buckingham Palace. Because a lot of people don't realise that if you are a well-known figure like the Prime Minister or the Queen, um, you get an enormous amount of what we shall uh, call crank mail. Um, and the mail is often threatening, and it says things like, I'm coming to get you, and it's often quite disturbed. Now, um, you could dismiss the crank mail, because it, it runs into thousands and thousands of letters. But it is the case that every single assassination of any president of the US or world leader uh, in, in recent history, every single assassination successful or even, well, actually successful, has been preceded by a threat uh, that turned out to be real. So one of the issues is how do you decide when you're dealing with someone who's issuing a real threat and is really coming to get you, or someone who is saying something and it's more a product of a chaotic mind, a mental illness, and they're never going to come and show up. And the book um, is part, is a, is a novelised, uh, a, a commercial thriller type account of how psychiatrists make that decision. And um, there's a series of true stories um, in the book, but um, m many of the um, accounts are fictionalised. I think from people who've read the book, they, they don't actually, the, the bits that they think are fiction, because they're so incredible, actually are based on true stories. So um, uh, we had to fictionalise a lot of it, obviously, because um, uh, it, it would be inappropriate to reveal um, the, the names or the identities of people involved. But I'm just going to give you one example of one true story that's in the book, and the book has many um, uh, true, true stories. There was a chap, and I won't say the names, the names are in the book, um, who had a girlfriend, and the girlfriend got fed up with him and had enough of him in America, and she ended the relationship. But as many stalking, serious stalking incidents begin, he wouldn't take no for an answer, and he began to stalk her and pursue her. And she was so frightened of him that she moved to a neighbouring state, but he followed her uh, to the neighbouring state. And by the way, the book reveals how to tell when you say no to someone and they keep not taking your no, how to predict whether that is going to turn into something serious that you should alert the police about, or whether that person will eventually uh, leave you alone. Anyway, um, she then moved to a state on the other side of the states, and this guy followed her there. And she parked her car in a car park and left it, and it was in a place that wasn't being um, carefully monitored. And he broke into her car, and he booby-trapped the car so that it was filled with bottles filled with acid. And he booby-trapped it so that when she, if she came back into the car and turned the ignition key, the acid was going to spray over her, and she'd either be killed or very uh, seriously disfigured. So one of the central questions, and, and the, the book is full of incredible stories like this, is what's going on where someone can be love someone, theoretically, or maybe then get obsessed with them, and then it turns into this thing, which seems angry or, or hatred. And of course, one, one um, possible theory is that it's a kind of possessive love. And that's one of the things I want to talk about. I mean, uh, what different kinds of love there are, and the notion that many times we seem to get trapped or caught up in a possessive love, a love that views the other person as an object for you to control. And some people would say in that case, that was what was one of the things um, that was going on. But in a way, what I'm trying to do is take examples of dysfunctional love, like stalking, and say, can they teach us something about love general? love generally, and can they teach us something about more functional love? And there's a, a respectable tradition in medicine of doing this. So medicine has driven our understanding of the human body. It is because people had heart attacks and heart failure that doctors 
got interested in trying to understand these heart diseases and went into pathological investigations of the way the heart worked. So it was trying to understand the dysfunction of the heart that we got to a functional understanding of how the normal heart works. So there's a very respectable tradition in medicine that we take an organ that's not working well, and because it's not working well, we as doctors are interested in helping people suffering from this illness or disease, and we investigate the organ, and therefore we come to an understanding of how it works normally. And that's a very important idea, because in a way what I'm saying is the investigation in the book is to try and understand love, but we're coming at it through dysfunctional love. And a lot of people say, well, that's a strange route to go. But there's a long and ancient tradition in medicine that if you, if you understand why, why something doesn't work well, um, you might end up understanding um, how it works properly.